Welcome to Film My Run and welcome to Kovrak on the south coast of Cornwall. We are at the start line of the Arc of Attrition 100 mile race which goes from here all the way around the Arc of Cornwall and finishes in Porth Town on the north coast. In this video we are going to be going to all the major places around the race, all the major stops, all the major checkpoints on the Arc of Attrition 100 and the Arc of Attrition 50 mile race. So the race starts here at the entrance to this car park. You will leave Porth Town on a bus and arrive here well in time for the start of the race which is usually at midday. You will get here about 11, half 11 and you will line up at this point here right at the entrance to this car park. When the race starts you'll make your way down this hill here and then turn to the right and go along through Kovrak and then out onto the coast path. So let's go and have a look. Kovrak is a small village with not an awful lot of space which is why you get dropped off by a bus and why ideally crew and other cars uh, should not come to Kovrak for the start of the race. If you are crew make your way to Lizard Point and meet your runner there. When runners starts, when the race starts you'll come down this hill and you head along the coast road here and you will go onto the coast path at the other end of Kovrak village. So you'll climb up, a bit of a steep climb, up out of the village and then onto what is a fairly gnarly first 10 miles of the course. This beautiful location is Kennock Sands and provided there are no coastal path diversions then you'll come through here at five miles into the run. So you'll come down off the hill here and just skirt that beach there and then come across just below the, uh, the hill here and then you'll cross this bridge just here and then head into Kennick Sands and uh, once you get to the road there uh, you have about 200 meters to climb up to get back onto the coast path uh, and you'll carry on your way that way to the Lizard Point. So I just thought I'd pop up here onto the road to show you where you turn off when you've come up from Kennick Sands on the road uh, to turn off back onto the coast path. There will be plenty of people around still, the field won't have spread out that much so there'll be plenty of people who do know where they're going although just a warning that that is not the way to run your race, do not just follow the person in front. You will of course have the map on your GPS watch won't you? Uh, the GPX file on your watch make sure you're following that but uh, this path here is where you come off the road it's a good 200 meters it's not you know it's not just around the corner you do have to climb on the road quite a little way out of Kennick Sands but then you will come to uh, this path here which is the direction that you take to go off the road and back onto the coast path and to Lizard Point which is where we are headed now Down below me in the cove there is the picture perfect village of Cadwith. We're two miles further on from Kennick Sands and another two miles to go to get to Lizard Point. And if you look behind me we can see the lifeboat station and some of the other buildings at Lizard Point over in the distance. So do continually be on the lookout for those coast path signs, they come in all shapes and sizes and here's another one here just directing you out of Cadwith and up back onto the coast path. So at 10 miles in to the Arc of Attrition 100 miler, 
you come to Lizard Point. You'll pass the wireless station, you'll pass the lighthouse, and just down there ahead of us, you can see the cafe and the car park of Lizard Point. This is the first kind of major place where your crew can meet you. And most people will be getting here at around about two and a half to three and a half hours into the race. Absolutely beautiful scenery here. The cliffs are stunning. And you can see the terrain underfoot on this section is uh, very pleasant indeed. Nice, soft, compact uh, mud dirt. Um, but if it's raining, uh, this will be much, much more treacherous. And earlier on in the run, during the first 10 miles, actually some of the most difficult uh, sections of the, the whole run. It's just that because you are fresh legged, uh, then it doesn't feel so bad. But actually, it's really quite technical in that first 10 miles. So, as mentioned, if you do have crew, then uh, this is one of the earliest points that they can meet you on the course. That car park there is quite small. There is a larger car park just a bit further up the hill uh, where your crew can park. Please do remember that a lot of the car parks are National Trust or pay car parks, so be aware, make sure that you do pay. I've been caught out before and got a fine in the post, so make sure you pay for your car parks. Um, if you are self-supported, you basically just run straight through this section. Uh, runners will come through the car park here, past the cafe. And uh, whoever lives there has a beautiful view every morning. That's back up towards the lighthouse. This is a really good marker point to get to in the race. You've, you've got an idea of what the course is like now, you've got an idea of how long it's gonna take you to cover the terrain. So you can use that as a marker for the next 90 miles. Uh, when you reach Lizard Point, you can breathe a sigh of relief, the first bit is over and the running does get a little bit easier after this point for the next 15 miles or so before you get to Porth Levin. Up past another cafe up these steps. And then you can see there it is two and a half miles to Kynance Cove and it's 40 miles to the halfway point which is pretty much Land's End. So stick around, next video in the series is Kynance Cove. So welcome to uh, a beautifully sunny but very windy uh, Kynance. We're about a mile away from Kynance Cove itself. Uh, this is the old coast path here that I'm pointing out. Uh, you can see where the fence is there. That's where the old coast path used to go, but it's now fenced off. And the reason for that is because of coastal erosion. You can see in the distance there where uh, some of the cliff has fallen into the sea. Uh, the old coast path used to go along there it's simply too dangerous now either the coast path doesn't exist anymore because it has fallen into the sea or it's very close to the edge so uh, the council have built uh, a new or constructed a new coast path there you can see some brand new steps and this really is very very new indeed i had never seen this before until i got here to uh, to have a look so this has all been newly constructed. Uh, there's a, a Kynance Cove one mile acorn. You can see how new that uh, wooden strut is there. And you get to this section here. So there again, I think that's possibly part of the old coast path there uh, joining on. And this, well, this is beautiful, isn't it? Um, nicely almost paved road to run on here. Uh, you didn't get this a few years ago. Um, still a little bit of uh, a little bit of mud and uh, and if it's raining it might be a bit slippy but uh, generally this section now is uh, is very nice um, and, and generally the running here um, all the way to Porth Levin is not too bad at all uh, just a few places where you know you might wonder where the coast path is uh, but when you're at sections like this it's absolutely fine and, and you'll you'll enjoy running on this bit um, 
I think I was pointing out where I thought maybe some of the old coast path was there. But look here, you're, you're basically on grass, not entirely sure where the coast path might be. Don't wander too oh, far to the edge there. Uh, but again, uh, just have to kind of wander a bit over and you'll, you'll find the path again. There are, there are various different little routes that you can take over this area. Uh, but here we are back on this new path. Uh, heading towards Kynance Cove itself and down there um, a few years ago I used to go down onto the shingle beach um, and have to avoid the waves as they crashed in uh, to the little cove uh, I'm not sure I'm sure somebody will say in the comments if we do that now but but Kynance Cove is a very pretty little cove and next up we have Mullion Cove this is Mullion Cove, so this is about 17, 16, 17 miles into the run. Our runners will come down off the top of that hill, into the cove here, down those steps, across the uh, little harbour here. And then they will cross and go up those steps and back up onto the coast path up on the hill up there. So whilst Mullion Cove is a very small little cove, uh, it is possible and it is uh, used by crew uh, to meet runners as they come down off the hill uh, and into the harbour here. Um, just quick refuel quick drink quick bite to eat and then off again obviously if you're self-supported straight through and out again this is gun wallow uh, we're about 21 miles into the arc of attrition 100 at this point and this is another point at which the coast path has been diverted this was done probably a few years ago now about four years ago perhaps but you can see where the old path went along here and it's now blocked off by a fence uh, because this section of the path is really too close to the edge for comfort. Just there you can see it gets very very close to the edge and there's about a 50 foot drop on the other side of that cliff. So they've diverted the coast path just up to here. And over in the distance there, you can see Porth Leven, uh, which is at 25-ish miles. And that is the first official checkpoint and aid station. So this is Gun Wallow. Or Gun Wallow, I'm, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it. So if we just carry on along this path here, We'll show you where the diversion goes because uh, there is a little tiny bit of climbing in this. You do have to go up some steps to a higher path. Uh, when we were on the lower path, uh, it was straight and flat all the way along to the beach at Lou Bar. Uh, but now you do have to go up a bit. And you can see the sign here that says uh, Coast Path Diversion. So it should be fairly straightforward to know where you're going. And then when we get up to the top of this climb here, there is another acorn and another arrow pointing you in the right direction. So you turn left at the top here and carry on this much wider road uh, down to uh, towards the beach at Lou Bar. So having travelled from Kovrak through Lizard Point and on past Kynance Cove, and Mullion Cove, and along the top of the cliffs at Gunwallow, you now come to Low Bar. This is the beach at Low Bar. So runners will drop down off the cliff on a nice wide path, nice easy path. It's easy running. Uh, the beach can be a little heavy. It can feel a little bit heavy and a bit of a drag to get across the beach. And you might find yourself walking uh, it's a bit shingly as well. It's not, it's not just sand, it's shingly beach. 
so you get across the beach, you head for that white building over there and then it's road all the way, uh, pretty much tarmac road all the way into Porth Leven. So having crossed over Lou Bar, you'll come into Porth Leven via this church here, this lovely church, drop down and make your way around the harbour wall. All the way around the harbour until you get to this point here. Now when you get to this road, you'll head off out, out of Porth Leven. And that's the road that you go on to get to the football club, the Porth Leven Football Club, where you will find the first checkpoint. So here we are at Gala Park, which is the home of Porth Leven AFC. This is the football club in Porth Leven, and this is the 25 mile first checkpoint, the first official checkpoint on the Arc of Attrition 100. And uh, you come in and you go into this building here. You don't, ha you don't have to go in as long as you pass through. You can uh, run down the outside there of the pitch and round and back out again. Uh, but uh, most people will go inside into the uh, clubhouse here here, uh, where there will be all the usual fare that you'd expect from a mud crew checkpoint. And it's a good half a kilometer, I'd say, out of Porth Levens. Uh, you may well be met by an archangel at the harbour who will run you in. Many of you will arrive here when it's just about time to put head torches on, so five or six o'clock in the evening. So when you get here, it'll be light. When you leave, it will be dark. Sometimes I think it's a real shame that the Ark of Attrition is in winter time when there's so much darkness because when you come here to Cornwall you're here for the views and the scenery and here we are at Pra Sands and it's absolutely gorgeous on this lovely sunny day but you will come through here in the dark unfortunately pretty much everyone everyone will come through here in the dark um, we are about two or three miles west never eat shredded wheat yeah two or three miles west of uh, Port Leven and still to get to Perinuthno and then Marazion and on to Penzance so you're kind of halfway between the two it is a beautiful long golden sands beach you'll come through on the coast path just above the beach carry on through the car parks and then out the other side your crew can meet you here if you want to or they can meet you at Perinuthno a little bit further along the coast so as you come into Pra Sands or Prey Sands I've also heard it pronounced uh, you'll come along the, uh, the path at the top of the beach, uh, along the grass, but then you will come down through the car park and down these steps. Then you head along in front of this building here, across there and back up onto the coast path that direction. Unfortunately, this lovely cafe on Pra Sands will be closed when you get here. <laughs> so you'll just have to run in front of it and look a bit sad and then follow your way up back onto the road this direction. Now, as far as I could see, there are not many acorn signs directing you through Pra Sands. So you just need to keep your wits about you. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. You just come along the beachfront, really. Uh, and then you'll eventually get to some signs. So you've got this coast path sign here. So that says coastal footpath. And then just opposite that sign over here, you have another old post with the acorn on it. So once you get up here, the other side of Pra Sands, it's fairly straightforward to get back up onto the hills. And then all you have to do is climb back out again. That is basically the arc of attrition, is just come down into a valley or a cove or a beach and then head on back up again. As it's such a lovely day, I think I am gonna go and have some coffee at the cafe. Just a little further on from the crew point at Perinuthno, you come to a point that almost everybody will go wrong on on their first arc of attrition. And it's this point at Treno Cove, where the path appears to go down onto the beach. And especially in the dark, it's so easy to do that. Now, it's not a disaster if you do go down onto the beach. You can actually continue on the beach and then get back up onto the coast path later on. But what you should be doing is following the path to the right. Let me just show you. You can see the natural thing is to go straight ahead, but actually 
there's no coast path sign there is a national trust sign and you carry on up here to the right keep your eyes open for the Treno Cove National Trust sign here but there is no acorn no coast path sign but this is the correct way to go and this is the coast path and this will take you on towards Marizion. If you do go wrong at Treno Cove, uh, it's probably easier to turn around and go back where you came to find the coast path. However, if you've gone too far on the beach or you just simply can't bear turning round, then uh, you can carry on along the boulders for about three, 400 meters and you'll eventually come to this set of steps that's on the screen now. Climb up those steps and come back along the path to this point. So this is where the coast path used to go. So you used to go down here and then down the steep uh, steel steps onto the beach, along the beach for a little bit and then back up. Uh, now you don't do that anymore. You turn and go up this path here. So you can see the coast path sign has been altered to tell you to turn right here. So it used to be that you would go down that path there and onto the beach. Uh, but now you uh, turn and go up this direction and head to Marizion that way. Once runners have finished at the checkpoint at uh, Porth Leven, uh, back on the coast path they'll go past Pra Sands or Pre Sands and then through Perinuthno as well. And finally, they'll come inland at Marizion. Uh, now, the coast path again is changed here. You do come inland a little bit earlier than you used to because, again, coast path has fallen into the sea and is no longer able to be used. So you come in on this path here and you head past St. Michael's Mount. Unfortunately, when you come on this road, if you're one of the runners in the Ark of Attrition 100, you will probably not see St. Michael's Mount because it will be pitch black. Uh, so you'll pass along this path, uh, take a note here of the acorn sign on the bin, and then carry on up the hill again until you get to the road. Uh, there's another acorn sign on a post just here. And then you cross the road and uh, sometimes crews will meet runners here uh, because the next section is about seven miles, eight miles into Penzance, all on tarmac or path. Uh, so uh, you will sometimes want to change shoes here into road shoes. Uh, some people do, some people don't. So you might be able to see St. Michael's Mount behind me. That's off the coast of Marazine and Penzance. You've run past that, you've run all the way along the seafront, all the way along the promenade, past the railway station and all the way to this junction here. Now when you get to this junction here, there will be Archangels, mud crew volunteers meeting you here to direct you right down this road to the rugby club, which is the site of your second checkpoint. No crew allowed in, as always, this is the rugby club and the doors, those two red posts there, those two red pillars are the entrance to the checkpoint. So you come off the seafront, the seafront is about 100 metres up there, you'll be running along Penzance seafront and somebody will run down with you on the road and see you into the checkpoint at the rugby club. Having made it out of Penzance, you'll eventually find yourself in the beautiful little fishing village of uh, Mausel. Some people find it a little bit difficult to navigate the coast path through Mausel. You are just still looking for the acorn sign. So you can see here, there's an acorn sign on here pointing you this way. Now, it's not the only way that you can go through Mausel. You can go plenty of different ways through Mausel, but the coast path is this way. And here again, you can see another coast path sign telling you to turn left. This will take you down just past the fishing boats and into the car park. The harbour's looking a little bare at the moment. Make your way through the car park at South Quay and then you'll see another southwest coast path sign on the post here and head up along past these houses here. And once you get to this point in Mausel, there is a handy sign with instructions of what to do. So if you read here, it says, are you looking for the coastal path? Walk up the slope, 
to the right of the builder's yard, turn left onto the road and go up Raginis Hill for approximately half a mile, then turn left at Port Innis House back to the cliff. So that's where we're going to go now and show you where that is. So you walk up this path here. So you walk up that path there, you hit the road, you take a left and once you're at the top of the hill we'll join you up there in a second. It's been a long journey of tarmac starting at Marizion, going into Penzance, coming through Newlyn, out of Newlyn and through Mausel, finally all the way along Key Road and all the way up this tarmac hill you eventually come to this coast path sign here and that finally leads you back on to the nice muddy coast path which you will be looking forward to having spent eight miles on tarmac and so from here you take a left off the road onto the path and it's two miles that way to Lamorna Cove head to the right of Port Ennis house and up we go Five miles on from Penzance, this is Lamorna Cove. Uh, Crews can meet runners here. Uh, it's a very small little village uh, nestled in a valley and um, very tight roads to get here. Runners will be coming through here in the middle of the night. We're looking at 10, 11 midnight to get here. Uh, coming down this path, in the night it does feel like you're quite close to the edge sometimes so it's about 45 miles in something like that come to a little bridge with the coast path sign on it and the next section is very is a very interesting uh, bit that often confuses people so uh, i'll just show you what i mean it's a little walk along the path here but it's, it's worth seeing. In the dark, this is scary as. It's not scary, but it, in the dark it feels like it and you don't know where the heck you're going. You've got a big cliff on your right hand side. But look, so look how, how near we are to a, a fair drop down to the sea. This is in the dark. So you climb up here. Again, right near the edge of a nice big drop down there. And you look at this and you go, where the heck am I supposed to go? <laughs> Where's the path? But um, you kind of make your way and it is here. Uh, not that way, but this way. You have to be a bit sure of your footing. And you make your way through here and up onto the rocks and then you suddenly see oh yes look a path of sorts I can't stress enough you're in the dark and uh, there's another nice drop right beside you and and you head off along there so this is the coast path coming along from Porth Kurnow Beach. So you've come down off one side of the valley, across the beach and then back onto the coast path up onto this side of the valley. Running along here and you get to this point here and you get to this coast path side here which directs you up these steps. So away we go pitch black, head torch on, 50 miles in to the Arc of Attrition 100. So you're halfway through. So it's actually a good place to get to because you know that you've reached a milestone in the race. Minak Theatre is an iconic place to get to. And uh, so when you're climbing these steps, even though you are scared stiff of that drop there, and you can hear the waves crashing on the rocks below, you should have a sense of relief in you that you are getting the back broken of this run. 
So up these stairs, and this is where it gets pretty steep. Hands on the floor as you climb up this bit. And again, don't want to fall really here, but um, it's not too bad. You've just got to be a little bit careful as you go up. Again, if you're nervous, like I am always on heights, three points of contact. Make sure you put one hand down on the ground as you climb up. And then you get here and it's a bit safer. You've got a railing to hold on to. You've got the fencing, the sea now feels a little bit further behind you. And so the last thing to do is to meet your crew now in the car park of the theatre. And you'll be able to see the lights of the cars and you'll uh, hear some chatter, hopefully. There's uh, only a couple of cars there now, but this will be fairly busy. This is Porthguara Cove. We're halfway between Minac Theatre and Land's End. Absolutely beautiful little cove. As with most of the little coves that you come across in the Ark of Attrition, you don't really get to spend any time here. You come down the path, off the coast path, into the cove and then back out again straight away. You don't get to appreciate how beautiful they really are. So you've made your way out of Minak Theatre and travelled another four miles along the coast path to your third checkpoint, your third official checkpoint, which is Land's End, and that's here. And uh, your uh, archangels will greet you by running you up this path here and into the checkpoint, which is in the conservatory looking building at the back of the Land's End Hotel just here. Your crew can meet you. They can park in the car park at the front over there. They can either come back here or you can go to them. Uh, but remember, they're not allowed inside the checkpoint. You leave the Land's End checkpoint through that door there and you will travel this way behind the hotel and out and on your way to Senan Cove. You will make your way down the path to that white building down there and then you will cut right and head along the coast path and it's only about a mile to Senan Cove. In the distance you can see Land's End Hotel. This is where you need to come down. Now you need to keep an eye on your navigation here because there is a left path that you need to take. If you take, this, if you take the top path you'll end up going around the back of Senan and you'll have to come down on that road there into Senan and you'll, you'll extend your journey a little bit, it's a bit of a pain. Um, the best way to do it, the correct way to do it, is to follow the path to the left to get to this building. Now in the dark, obviously, you won't be able to see it very clearly. Shine your head torches up to see if you can see it on the headland here, one mile from Land's End, this building, and then you take this path going down so uh, just make sure your runner knows where they're going and that is Sen and Co down there so a little tricky bit of navigation it's not the end of the world if you get it wrong 
it just extends your journey a little way. Uh, but this is the path you need to come down. So you're going to get here. Runners will get here. What, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. a little bit that's a little bit tricky uh, but there will usually be a marshal here to tell you where to go uh, so if your runner gets to here this is the second car park at Southern Cove so you've come down from the promontory up there and you've come all the way through uh, the village and you come to this second car park and you might be a bit confused as to where to go next and this is where you go there will be a, probably a marshal here to tell you but you don't, you don't follow the path down there. You go up here and it's not actually marked. There's no mark. So basically that, that's the coast path there. You follow that path. This is Gwynva Beach, which is uh, just about a mile from Senan Cove, a couple of miles from Land's End and just round the corner from Cape Cornwall, which you are heading to next. Do not be tempted to go up these steps, which I once did. Uh, that will take you all the way up to the car park at the top. It is not the way you want to go. You just need to carry on along the beach uh, till you get round the headland and to Cape Cornwall. Just a few miles from Land's End and Senan Cove, we get to here. This is Cape Cornwall. Absolutely stunning spot. If you can get here when it's light, it is absolutely amazing. So the sea again on the rocks, the tower up there on the hill. You'll arrive at Cape Cornwall by coming up these steps from the coast path directly into the car park where you can meet your crew. Uh, this car park is not normally uh, so busy, certainly not as busy as car parks further along the route at Pendeen, say. Uh, so you should be able to find your crew, no problem. And then you head up the road there uh, ahead of me uh, and turn left and go back onto the coast path. abandoned tin mines as far as the eye can see here. Um, we are just a bit further on from Cape Cornwall. The path here is strange because sometimes you'll be led off in all sorts of little directions and then you'll kind of join back onto the main path again, then you'll go off again and back again. Just try and stick to your GPS map on your watch. Um, otherwise, this path that I'm on now, this path here, pretty much goes all the way along where you need to go, but you will be led off. See, here we go, coast path off to the left here. That will go off a little windy journey, and then it will kind of come back onto that main path again. So stick to the coast path where you can, but if you get lost, don't panic because uh, this, this path here will kind of lead you in the right direction. But look at all these amazing tin mine buildings here. These will light up uh, on your head torch as you run through here looks awesome obviously if you're in the 50 miler then this is all in daylight anyway i don't know if you can see over there in the distance uh, kenny jack castle and kenny jack cliff is over there so runners in the 50 when you come through here it'll still be daylight be gorgeous sun will be out you'll be sunbathing it'll be fine 100 runners this is the dead of night but when you come through here and your head torch shines on the old tin mines here uh, it makes it really ethereal and especially if there's a bit of sea mist coming in it's really mysterious and exciting uh, so this is Givor tin mines here please remember as always you do have to stick to the path you just don't know what is off in the bracken uh, there are plenty of disused tin mines as you'll see from signs everywhere along the coast path stick to the path so we've come about a mile along the coast from Givor tin mines and this is Pendine watch lighthouse with the fog horns just there and behind me the incredible cliffs and uh, the sea smashing up against the rocks there 
with the tin mine chimneys as you can see in the distance. You will arrive at Pendine Watch on this tarmac road here. You'll come off the coast path and join the road about half a mile up there and you'll run in on the tarmac into the car park here. There will be Archangels here as well. There'll be a van with uh, drinks and some food in this car park for you. Once you are done in the car park, you head down the footpath here and uh, you head out onto the coast path this way. Now, there are signs here painted on the rock that say private property, but underneath it says Southwest Coast Path on foot only. So that is the way that you go. This is one of the more exposed sections of coast path you'll be on. This is Trevian Cliff. We are at least three miles still from Zenor, two miles back from Pendine. Nice sheer drop down there. You need to be careful along here in the middle of the night. It will be probably dark when you come through here. It might just be coming up to sunrise. And uh, because you will probably not get the views because it will be dark, <laughs> take them all in now, enjoy it, have a look around because you will just be running by the light of your head torch when you come through here. Nice example here of some of the uh, rocks that you'll have to climb through on this section of the coast path. So Gunnard's head behind me, when you get here, if you're a front pack runner, it is still going to be dark. So breathe in the views now while you can. Uh, if you are a mid pack runner, back pack runner, it's going to be starting to get light when you get here. It may well be light now. Um, so uh, enjoy this view. Uh, this is right in the middle of the difficult section. Uh, you've not yet got to Zenor. Um, you are well past Pendine. So this, this is as remote as it now gets for you. And, and even then, uh, there are houses less than a mile away that I can see dotted in the distance. So never feel that you are completely isolated. But yeah, this, this is about as remote as it gets. And they've put a new gate post since I was last here. Look, that's a brand new lovely gate since I was last here. So this way is the way you're headed towards Zenor, not far away from here and St Ives about seven or eight miles further on. And then back here, this is the way you've come already uh, from D. So here we are at Zenor. You've done half the difficult section. You've done six, seven miles since Pendine and you are halfway to St Ives. If you want to get out, if you want to pack it in, you're not that remote. There are houses a hundred meters that way. The town, the village of Zenor is just half a mile down that path. And this is a very easy place to decide that you're going to quit. Do not quit here. Do not quit. It's too easy. It's hard work. You're tired. You are done in. You've had a difficult night. The sun is just coming up. Do not quit. Carry on and get to St Ives. Reassess when you get to St Ives. And this is what it's all about. This is why you're here. These absolutely stunning views, the rainbow there, the sun shining on your face in the morning light, the views of the cliffs down there, the sea crashing up against the cliffs. It's incredible. This is why you signed up for this race. This is why you're here.
So I've come to the car park at uh, Porthmere Beach. Uh, this is where you can have crew if you want to, just before you get into the checkpoint at St Ives. Hopefully when you arrive at St Ives, it'll be as beautiful a day as it is today with the sun out and the morning sun on your face should give you a lift to get yourself out of St Ives to do the last 20 miles before the finish. Behind me is the headland that you will round. When you finally see St Ives, you will breathe an absolutely massive sigh of relief. You've made it over the tough section and it's now just a mile through the town into the checkpoint. Now, the idea with St Ives is getting from Porthmere Beach to this bay and Wharf Road here. Now, nobody's going to disqualify you for getting lost in St Ives. It is honestly a bit of a nightmare. If you've got a GPS map on your watch, then follow that. If not, study the map beforehand to work out how to get from Porthmere Beach over there, over there, to Wharf Road here. And once you're on Wharf Road, then you head straight for the lifeboat station over there. Now, there should be Archangels, uh, Mud Crew volunteers, to help you get from here, Wharf Road, through to the Guildhall, just a little bit further along. Let's go there now. Okay, so this is the Guildhall. Now, don't panic about this. You will be directed by Archangels all the way into here. So all you need to do is find your way over to um, Wharf Road uh, by the bay there uh, and then Archangels will guide you all the way in here and also they'll help you to get out as well. So don't panic about that but this is the Guildhall and we'll, you'll just go in an entrance just to the side here, let me show you. So this is the entrance that you'll go in uh, to the St Ives checkpoint. It's a, it's a very small road, it's easily missed so uh, that's why they've got Archangels making sure that you find your way and they help you to get into the checkpoint at St Ives. So when you're finished at St Ives checkpoint, you'll come back down here. You'll have just come up this road and then turned up to go to the checkpoint there. Now you'll come back down this road and you'll head out and you'll go back down that road there and out that way. So you'll see here, this is the St Ives Art Club. And you'll notice as you come down here, you'll see the Southwest Coast Path sign with a little arrow. So you know that you are on the right route out of St Ives. So as you come down this path uh, through the West Cornwall Golf Club, just look to your left. You can see Hale and you can see the start of the sand dunes where you're about to go. So as you make your way from St Ives, you'll come to this beautiful little uh, graveyard here, uh, Commonwealth War Graves here with the little chapel over there. And then the bigger church here, uh, just as you come through Lelant here. So here we are on the quiet roads just out of Lelant. We're by Lelant railway station, actually on the Saltings. This is the quiet road that you will run down next to parallel to the railway line. So this is Lelant railway station. There's Hale over there. You're heading over there, but you need to go the long way round, I'm afraid. It's all flat from here. Uh, coming out of St Ives, it is pretty hilly, actually. It's not flat at all. But uh, once you get to here, it's flat uh, all the way along, parallel to the railway line, and then round and all the way into Hale before you hit the sand dunes. So arriving in Hale now, I just wanted to show you something that's just past this sign here as we come into Hale. You should really turn left because the coast path goes down here, down this path here and runs along the riverside. This, the annoying thing about it is that actually in about 400 metres up there, it just comes back up onto this road. So, you know, you could just stay running on this road all the way into Hale. But technically speaking, the letter of the law says that the coast path is just down there and then around the other side of these houses here. When you get to this point in Hale, you'll find that uh, a lot of people use this as a crew point. So we're just across the, uh, the river from uh, Asda here and um, you're heading up this way before you turn left onto North Quay to head up to the sand dunes. Now, 
what will happen is a lot of runners will have their crew parked in the laybys along the side of the road here so if you have crew uh, it is it is fine to to get your crew to park on the laybys here uh, just in hail and then you make your way uh, up the road here to North Quay. Now hail can be a little bit confusing what you've done is you've come from St Ives now St Ives is way back over there in the distance you followed the road and the coast path all the way along here now it's really not very far uh, as the crow flies from over there to over here but actually you do have to run all the way round over there into the distance across a bridge and then all the way round through Hale to come to this point here um, you can see Asda, the Asda shop there in the distance. You will pass that, you'll come through the North Quay, up the North Quay to make your way onto this path here to get yourself into the sand dunes. So this is kind of the start of the sand dunes. The really difficult part of the sand dunes isn't for a little while yet, but you'll make your way past the holiday homes, the caravan parks, uh, before you get to the main sand dunes. Uh, so this is where you head out of Hale, towards Gwythian and Godrevi before you get up onto the North Cliffs. So here we are at what is commonly referred to as the Dunes of Doom, but in all honesty, they really aren't the Dunes of Doom at all. Even with 90 miles in your legs, the Dunes of Doom are not like running on the sands in Morocco. It's nothing like that. In fact, a lot of the time it's lush green grass like you can see below me. And also the, a lot of the sand is compacted in. So it's not really that hard to run on at all. And all you're looking for are these stones, these standing stones. Each standing stone should have um, an acorn to show you that you are on the coast path and maybe even an arrow and also sometimes it'll have the name of the place that you're headed to so often you'll be looking out for Gwythian Towns for example which is where you're headed to so just look out for these stones as you go through the dunes of doom yes at night time it's going to be a bit more difficult hopefully you'll get here when it's light but if not just keep shining your torch in different directions you should glint one of these stones in the distance and you'll be able to make your way through the dunes no problem at all. Now it is usually possible to see the next stone from the one that you're at however um, I have noticed a couple of stones that have fallen over uh, so this stone here for example that says Gwythian Towns on it that is fallen over um, you can see the next stone in the distance there and I can also see the one behind and as you come to the end of the sand dunes there we are there's another stone these are the stones that are guiding you through all the way remember and this one has Gwythian Towns on it and that's probably a good one to keep looking for any stones that say Gwythian Towns head for those so you know you've made it through the sand dunes when you reach this point here this is Gwythian car park so Gwythian from here you need to go along to Godrevi car park which is another crew point you can meet your crew here if you want at Gwythian uh, many people do meet their crew and there will be archangels at Godrevi car park which is just another mile or so further on before you hit the north cliffs it can be very tempting to miss out the sand dunes altogether and run on this absolutely gorgeous beach here uh, but please don't do that that is not the official coast path route that is not the official arc of attrition route You've made your way through the sand dunes and across the beach and you come along here cross over the river on a bridge and you make your way up these steps and then you are into Godrevi car park so in this car park there will be volunteers there will be a van uh, with refreshments if you don't have crew but if you have crew this is your second last crew stop in this car park here from here you've got 10 miles to go to the finish once you've come through Godrevi car park then it's a short flat run along the coast path 
with this beautiful view of the beach and the lighthouse on the cliffs over there. And then you climb up onto the North Cliffs, heading towards Hell's Mouth and Patrith further on. So let's head on up to Hell's Mouth now. I remember coming here on holiday as a child with my family. This is Hell's Mouth. So you've just climbed up from Gwythian back onto the cliffs. These are the North Cliffs and uh, you hit Hell's Mouth here and then you have a couple of miles really of pretty flat, fairly monotonous running. If you're really tired, which you should be, uh, it will feel like a bit of a grind uh, just before Portreath. There are so many points on the coast path where you can see where the coast path once used to go before it all fell into the sea. Uh, there's an old post there look which used to have a coast path sign on it and the old path I guess used to go down there but ever since I've known it it's uh, come down there. It is incredible actually to see the levels of erosion that have happened over the years. If you look at Hell's Mouth here you can see the grass at different levels on the cliff face where it slipped down and you know where the coast path used to be is now a hundred feet down below um, and uh, gradually falling further and further into the sea. So after Hell's Mouth it's fairly flat running until you get to this section here so I've just parked at Bassett's car park here and uh, stunning cliff views again but we're going to go on now to a couple of stings in the tail. I'm going to show you one of them. Short dips down and then sharp up the steps. So let's go and have a look at those now. Okay so here we are about 400 meters on from Bassett's car park and uh, it may not look much but believe you me, when you have, what, you'll have 98 miles, if you're doing the 100, you'll have 98 miles or so in your legs by now. Uh, the whole race, as I'm sure you know, is well over 100 miles, 104-ish miles, depending on diversions. And you get to this and it's not funny. It isn't funny. And you have two of these short dip down and up, uh, up the steps there. You've got two of those to do and then you've got a valley. Now I'm not going to go to the valley but I will link it. Uh, it's in my very first arc of attrition video from 2017 or something, 18 perhaps. Um, I'll link it up there. Um, that will show you the valley that you need to go to just before you hit Portreath. Very near Portreath now but please do be careful if you are running here, um, especially at night. This is very close to the edge and a, a really sheer drop off the edge. I think quite recently some of this has fallen into the sea. So it is a sheer drop, literally, you know, four meters from me at the edge of the cliff there. Please be careful. Um, once you've come down that dip and out again, just keep your eyes on the path, stay to the path. Aren't you glad you decided to do the Ark of Attrition? <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? If you get to this point, then you are very near the cliff edge at Portreath. Portreath down there in the distance. Now you've actually come a little bit too far here because there is a path to the right here, uh, which you can go down. Now technically it isn't the coast path, but it, it doesn't make a lot of difference. The, the coast path does go just to the end of the peninsula there. So this path here, this is the very steep path that, uh, that you'll come down if you follow the coast path right to the end of the peninsula and down, down the really steep path. This is the, the slightly less steep path that comes down. Now, again, we're just a few meters from those signposts there. And uh, there's always been a little bit of a question mark about this bit here as well. Um, what you could do at one point was 
go down this slipway here and onto the beach which gives you a, a nice flat although sandy route into the centre of Portreath. The official coast path and technically the one that you should probably follow there's the sign you have to go on the road and unfortunately that does give you a little bit of a hill to get up and over and then down into Portreath but um, as far as I understand it as far as I'm aware and as far as the signposts say you go up that way so once you've come down off the cliff you go up the tarmac hill and then down this road here and uh, you'll see this coast path sign here it's a new coast path sign Godrevi's back that way but you are going to Porth Town and that sign there says three and a quarter miles to Porth Town so you'll cross around here that there might be uh, your crew here your crew can meet you here for the last time before you get to the finish line um, and sometimes there's a marshal here directing you kind of round down this road here and round the town and then you'll go back up onto the coast path via this tarmac road that leads up and out of the town uh, you see the houses up on the hill on the other side of the valley there uh, so you'll go up all that way up to meet the coast path again for your final three miles to Porth Town it is a really long slow drag up the tarmac road out of Portreath just keep going you may think the coast path is never going to appear but it will appear I promise you keep going up the hill when you get a little bit further along it gets it kind of flattens out a bit and you will then reach this coast path sign which says Godrevi eight and a half miles back that way you now only have 5k to go three miles to get to Porth Town and if you are lucky enough to make it here when it's still light then there are still some fantastic views of the cliffs as you make your way over your final three miles so once you reach here you are almost at the end of your journey you will come down the coast path here and then Porth Town is the village down in the valley there the old coast path used to go down here but it's now blocked off it's too close to the edge of the cliff so instead you go down the tarmac road just down there uh, that tarmac road is quite steep uh, and you will have trashed legs so just take care when you're going down it um, and once you get down the bottom you will run through Paul Town and out of the other side now just out of historical interest many moons ago in the days of yore when the Ark of Attrition was just a baby uh, it used to finish right here on the beach pretty much in Porth Town right next to the Blue Bar uh, which is currently getting refurbished so I can't go and have a coffee there uh, but that was the finish line of the Ark of Attrition now when you come into the finish you will come down the coast path from the cliffs up here and you'll come down on the road um, but that is not the end of your race now because the race now finishes some way out of Porth Town. So when you reach the foot of the hill in Porth Town, that is not the end. You still have at least a mile or so to go. Through Porth Town, you'll be directed onto this road. When you get to this sign here, that's when you come up onto this path. You'll make your way along this path here to a small bridge so after all the hours you've been running or walking you finally get to your last climb this will be the last climb of your race this will take you to the finish line you'll get to this bridge here you'll follow the path over and you will start climbing and you will start climbing until you reach the very top of this hill somewhere in the distance over there let's go and have a look it's a narrow path it's bracken strewn right so those guys are on their way down but you will head up here to the top of that hill once you get to the top of that hill it is the end you have about 400 meters to run on the grass into the eco park and to the finish line of the arc of attrition or the arc 50 yeah. 
And this is the top of that final hill. You might be able to see Porth Tarn over there in the distance. And you've climbed all the way up that long, slow drag at the end of the race. And you come to this point here. You'll see this sign here, which says footpath to the beach. And then you head along this field here and into the eco park. It's literally 400 meters. And there it is. There's the finish line. The eco park in Porth Tarn. There will be, obviously there'll be a big finish line arch there. Um, if you're coming in in the dark, it'll all be lit up. You'll be able to see where you're going. You run through that finish line and that is your journey over. You've done it. You've done the Arc 50 or you've done the Arc of Attrition 100. You've completed your journey and well done for doing so because it's not easy. This is the Mount Pleasant Eco Park. This is just outside Porth Town, on the top of a hill, beautiful location. And this is where you will arrive for registration on Thursday evening or registration on Friday morning. This is also where you will have your kit checked and where you will catch the bus to the start of the 100 at Kovrak or the start of the 50 at Minak Theatre. Uh, this is private parking here for staff and the like but uh, the main parking is over in the field over to the right. That building there is where most of the action happens, kit check, uh, race briefing, that kind of thing will happen in there. Uh, there's a cafe here. Hopefully the cafe will be open for you at some point uh, whilst you are at the eco park at the beginning or the end of the weekend and then we walk here to what will be a very busy room certainly at the end of the race this is the finish line of the arc of attrition that arch there uh, there will be a little bit more razzmatazz than just that but uh, that arch there is the finish line you'll run across that field having come up the hill run out of Porth Town, along the road, up the hill, across the field, and you will finish right there. This will all be very busy on Saturday evening as runners finish their 150 mile races. And it, round here, uh, this is where you will jump on the bus. There will be plenty of buses to take you to the start line. Don't panic about getting on them or missing them. You can't drive down there, Kovrak is very small, not enough car parking space for everyone to descend on there in their cars, so you must get the bus. The Eco Park is also where we will have the trophy presentations that will be at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, presented by Vassos Alexander. So make sure you're there for that, and that is the end of this arc prep series of videos enjoy your race and we'll see you out on the course